Okay, I've just seen the most repulsive lady. Oh no, the most repulsive lady? Oh, I might be sick at this one. Okay, girlies. Hello, beautifuls. Welcome back to my Chanel. Finance, mortgages, Bitcoin have absolutely nothing to do with today's video, my lovelies, which is another volume of unhinged makeup TikTok fails and beauty fails. I'm so excited. I guess I'll just piss on the floor. Isn't that right, Mr. Biscuits? The CEO of Estee Lauder. <gasps> Yes, yes you are. Lots of responsibility. Yes, are you going to hire and fire today? This series has been doing astronomically well here on the Chanel and I haven't actually done one for a little while. So my loves, are you ready? If you do not know me, my name is Luxaria. I have been a makeup artist for 16 years. In fact, actually it's, it's coming up to 17 years. Uh, that is disgusting. And I also have a biochemistry degree because I have a fundamental interest in the way things work. And I love formulation. Isn't that right, biscuit child? I brushed your teeth this morning and we weren't friends for a little bit, were we? Because you were like, how dare you, mummy? How dare you? Throughout this series, my lovelies, I react to various TikToks found over on, surprisingly, TikTok. Yes. If you want to go and follow me over there, it is XXLuxaria. Please tag me in any unhinged makeup and beauty fails that you find. What? Are you on? Comfortable, you just wanted to sit on my lap and now you want to get off. Okay, all right then. Do you want to sit on your little pillow? Mr. Biscuits, more like Mr. Fidget Bums. Oh, wow. scandalous. Throughout this series, we have seen a plethora of fails and also some wins, actually. We've seen people glue their eyelashes shut. We've seen severe reactions to skincare. And what's probably the most surprising is that we have seen some rather unfortunate filler incidents. <laughs> Grab yourself a beverage. I feel like this liquid should be iridescent. I feel like that would really top it off. Pop your little ochenga right into your TikTok hole. Ooh, no say. Oh, you are no say. Is it gonna get banned? Maybe. Don't take any joy in the TikTok ban because they're trying to sneak in a VPN rule. With that being said, my love, sit down comfortably and let's watch some unhinged makeup TikTok fails. I can't wait to die. Right, so this one has a little caption that says, girl's birthday makeup be horrible. It looks like she's at a party, probably a birthday party, judging from the title. Let's watch. Oh, she's very happy. Oh, hello, yes. She's on her sand. Oh, hey, y'all, so. Yeah. It's not really Thank you. Oh, this man is like judgmental girls. Best birthday makeup out there, y'all. Shots of alcohol. Oh no, am I going to be flagged for promoting drug use? Yeah. Yay. Oh no, I'm. No, that's got. She don't need to do that, but on her birthday, I guess she decides she got to always have me. I don't be knowing why. This has to be a spoof, my darlings. Right, we're gonna pause there because that's bonkers. Although, if you don't set your makeup, this can in fact happen. You can print your face onto other people and places and things. Does it feel good? Ah. So, should we talk about the makeup? Let's find a nice shot. There we go. Okay, let's talk about this makeup. This looks like it might be a professionally achieved makeup for an event, shall we say. Are you sure? Now, I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say something. As someone that paints like a showgirl with a day job, there is something to be said about specific types of makeup to specific events. A lot of makeup we see nowadays is influenced by drag. Your fave could never. That's not a bad thing. In fact, actually, it's an incredible way of achieving a transformative look. However, I do feel like sometimes the message of why certain steps that are done is lost along the way. Drag makeup and like influencer style makeup that was really popular between like 2015 to 2019, which we're still seeing people do now, is very, very similar to drag makeup. Very similar. And the reason why I'm saying this is because historically drag was performed on stages and stages have very specific lighting, quite often very bright, bold lights that will erase any detail that is done on the face unless it's over exaggerated. Paint for the back row, as they say. And you'll also see some queens that paint for the audience that are down the road, round the corner at the bank. Love that. <laughs> um. We've all been there. We've watched a YouTube tutorial or a TikTok makeup tutorial in which we see someone do the triangles of white under here. Just full, solid, thick, full coverage white. And then they blend it out accordingly. If you are not going on stage, 
and you are going to an event, let's say here, like I can sort of see that this girl here has very similar areas of highlighting, shall we say, that are quite dramatic, quite dramatic, very ready for stage, not quite so ready for up close personal photos in a dimly lit restaurant, I'm judging by the vibe, restaurant party vibes. It's gonna look bonkers. Your face is gonna look absolutely unhinged bonkers. You don't know me. Because technically, even highlights, unless you're on stage, have a tone to them. Usually they're like a soft pink, like a candlelight glow, a warmth, an orange, a yellow, something like, sun-kissed, something like light-kissed, light life, yes. Unless you're in the goth clubs, of course, then paint for whoever you want. <laughs> the reason why this kind of makeup is pulled all the way up to the nose, almost down to the edge of the mouth, and then all the way out across the cheekbones, is because that is where a stage light would hit you. If you look at anyone from any which way, which isn't where a stage light would be, the makeup's gonna look a little bit too extra, shall we say. Now, I'm of the opinion that you can look however the f you want. But if you want to look the most utmost gorgeous, striking, sculpted woman on the go, avoid a white highlight. It is just not gonna give what do you think it's gonna give. You're, it's not, no. A great rule of thumb for this is to do a shade or two lighter than your foundation shade that you will be using and also set it with a pigmented powder. I know that a lot of people love a loose setting powder. Personally, I love a press powder, especially the ones that come with a little bit of pigment in them. If you're looking for something a bit more budget and affordable, I would say Collection. They have a great selection of warm and yellow toned powders that are great for setting lighter areas of concealer for highlights. My personal favorite, however, is the Fit Me powders because they have a bit more pigment and there's a bigger shade range. So be aware, my lovelies, paint for the room you're gonna be in. <laughs> oh, what's this one? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Right, we've got a two minute tutorial here by Janelle the Bear. Uh, I'm sorry, what? And the little comment says, help, Every time I put black eyeliner on the bottom waterline, I look like a pirate. Oh, relatable. Okay, if you think heavy makeup looks bad on you, watch this. Okay, Janelle, teach makeup me Makeup looks secrets. bad on you? Watch this video. Right. I can't recreate this makeup because I look like a pirate or I look like a panda. What do I do? Sometimes you really do want to make your eyes just like pop. A few celebrities who pop do this really puss. well are the Hadids. You can see the eye looks are not too dark, but they also aren't just plain mascara. I'm going to be doing a little No, I will say though, the point of a, a Hadid style eye is not the makeup look. It's actually how snatched up and away the brow lift is. Time for a brow lift. Oh. A majority of like Caucasian ladies will not be able to achieve a look like this because that's the reason why Bella Hadid has this eye shape. I'm, here, plastic plastic mascara. Anyway. I'm gonna be doing a little tutorial on how to achieve this look. You okay. wanna start off with a contour stick. Take a brush like yes. this, yes. applying yes. it into the inner corner of We're my doing some eye and the outer corner as well, right yes. under the brow bone. This really Great. helps give dimension to your eyes. I really yes. suggest getting a neutral makeup palette. Yes. Start off that's with not neutral, that is burgundy. Shade. Madam, this, in what universe is this a neutral makeup palette? Excuse me, do you, do you buy, sorry. <laughs> I love that. That's not neutral at all. This is like a burgundy dusky palette designed for bedroom eyes. Start off with this pinky right. purpley shade all yes. over the crease of the eye. A now neutral, taking this darker shade. brown shade, I'm going to line yeah. my eye. You can make this as messy as you want because we're going to blend it out. Start okay. smoking this out. Take a yes. black eyeshadow and use that same brush. We're just going to line a winged liner really thin. It's following that natural shape of our eye. Take that yes. same black eyeshadow and put it on the top of your eye. We're not gonna put it on our waterline. Anything that falls, just wipe it with a finger. Mix all of there. these shimmers together. Yeah, really just so focusing that into the inner corner of my crease. Take mm -hmm. an eyeliner, outline again the shape of your eye. If you yes. go too thick, this is exactly what's going to make your eyes look very heavy. Take like a red and a brown on my waterline. The lashes are very important. Your lashes always tend to fall down. Use a waterproof mascara. Take That's, a yeah, half take. lash starting at oh the my outer God, edge wait, of my eye. Actually, I have a very similar look really to this today. Extra, mm. I'm gonna take this pinky purpley shade and Mix right, it with the, the red and the brown. Lightly yeah. placing that all under my eye. Blending yes. it out, but making sure that we keep it very close to the eye. Maybe yes. going sky high and just putting that on my bottom lashes. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna add sky. some more glitter just sky. into the inner corner. And there we go. You can uh, make I will say though, this is very like great makeup, great eye shape, great gorgeous. I'm gonna say though, she's already got that gorgeous eye shape that this kind of a makeup look works well for. Unfortunately, not all of us are born with this eye shape. I've had mine surgically altered. I've had bone removed to get more visible eyelid, shall we say. It's not an option for everyone, fully aware of that. Now, I agree that it is kind of difficult to make like a really grungy, smoky eye 
not make you look like a pirate. I completely agree. It's not a look for everyone. You have to be really confident to pull it off because a lot of it is about the attitude rather than just like being a dainty trad wife at home with the grungiest smoky eye you could ever see. She's got a KitchenAid. A key to making this kind of a look not look pulled down, accidental, or like day after lived in makeup is actually the angle of your eyeliner. I've got a nail file here and I'm just going to give you a brief tutorial. So the edge of the nose up to the edge of the eye out is where you're gonna pull your liner for an upswing, uplifted look. If you pull eyeliner down in any way, shape or form, you're gonna end up turning your eye down, which means any darkness you put under here is like dark shadows or blending or any of that. It's gonna make the whole eye feel like it's turned down, a little bit sad, a little bit pirate. Now, if that's the look you're going for, absolutely fine. But if you want that uplift kind of elevated grunge look, you need to pay attention to the angle of your eyeliner. And if you're unsure about which angle of eyeliner works for you, use that little bit of playtime before you get in the shower after a long day where you're like, Do you know what? It's, it's absolute cuckoo time. It's whack-a-doodle time. It is whack a doodle time. Let's go bananas with different eyeliner shapes and just find out what works for you. A general rule of thumb is to follow the same line that your jaw makes so that you've got your jaw, your contour, your highlight, your eyeliner, and then your eyebrow. Anything done with that little ratio in mind will look very flattering. And if you have heavy eyelids, you might even have to find that you have to tilt your head down and then do your eyeliner. And that's the end of that chapter. Oh, okay, right. Why your makeup looks bad, girl? Okay, please, please tell me. Oh, she is a silent woman. Goodness me, this is the quietest video I've ever heard. The wrong makeup brushes will ruin your makeup. To get your makeup to look like mine, okay. these are the brushes you need. The best right. foundation brushes have short bristles and are dense to disperse your products evenly. Yes. This one's from Hourglass, this is from Mask, oh, and this one is from Say. I've oh. always been a sponge person for my under eye concealer. Yes, this one I'm is from Real Techniques, girly. and I also really love the Beauty Blender. For I didn't like the Real Techniques bra uh, sponge because it I like to use bristles with longer hairs, not as dense as my foundation brushes. This one's really good because it has a curve, which yeah. really helps you to carve out your cheeks. Yeah. And I love that this is a nice circle because it disperses my cream blush exactly where I want it. Yes. These are actually from Primark. They're really cheap. <gasps> Primark girls. So don't sleep on them. Powder blush and powder bronzer, you can either go big or small. Yes. If I use a bigger brush, that means I want a softer look, the product to be dispersed over a wider surface area. Yes. And I don't want as much coverage. Yes. If I use a smaller brush, yes. I want a more focused application. Yes. I really want to carve out my cheeks with bronzer or I really want to apply a heavy layer of blush. So, I'm gonna completely agree there. Her skin looks absolutely flawless. We must remember though, however, that social media compresses, well, maybe not YouTube, but other social medias compress and put videos through a strange compression format that makes everyone's skin just look flawless, it seems. So, let's talk about makeup brushes. What are you doing? What are they for? Where did you get them and why, girls? I'm not sure if a lot of people know this, but a powder brush, like a big fluffy powder brush, was originally invented to actually dust away excess powder. Be sure you pat your powder on. Don't rub it, don't scrub it, and don't try to remove your surplus powder with your puff. You should always use a powder brush. Do you recommend any certain type of powder puff? Gagatrondra girls, I know, a scandal here in the studio today. Back in the day in which you would wear a vanishing cream and then just slap on a heavy pigmented powder and then dust away the excess was how a flawless base was achieved. Nowadays, we use a lot of liquid products, we use a lot of cream products. That method isn't often used, even though it does produce gorgeous results. I would actually hazard a guess and say that if you are having problems with blending your bronzer or your contour or your blush, you might be using a brush that's just too big. Here I have a selection of three makeup brushes that I would use for cheek products. If I'm doing an ultra fast look and I just want to look sun-kissed and I've got nothing else that I need to do really with my skin, I just want to have a little bit of coverage, off we go girls. I would use my bronzer and contour on a brush like this. Massive, fluffy, dense, also still full of bronzer. But if you compare this to the size of my cheek, it is huge. Like that is so big. If I was to try and apply precision contour with a brush this big, it's just not gonna work. However, if I was to use a brush that's this kind of a shape, oh, taking it back to 2010, girls, this is a brush. Oh, oh, influencer. For precise, easily blended contour and bronzer, you want something that's about this size, and it's also got a little dome. It's like a dome finish, and it fits nicely under a cheekbone, but also applies enough pressure 
to blend out gently. And that is what gives like an ultra precise yet blended look. Then of course you have a brush like this, which is a duo fiber brush. You can see that there's bristles up here and then an extra layer of bristles underneath. This has got a flat top, so it's great for foundation, specifically lightweight, but you might have to go over with a sponge in order to get rid of additional texture that sometimes a dual fiber brush can create. And it's also good for blending in concealer if you want a little bit of like a lighter finish concealer. So yes, my lovely, I agree. If you feel like your makeup isn't looking quite the same as the people you see online, I mean, it might all be fake anyway. I mean, Instagram girls, just double check the size of your brushes. You never know. Sometimes the right tool can really help elevate a look. <gasps> Okay, I've just seen the most repulsive lady. Oh no, the most repulsive lady? Do I mean? Oh, I might be sick at this one. Okay, girlies. IPS beauty girls. Right, what is this? What? And yes, I am gonna call it a dirty lush video because that's exactly what it is. Oh. And no, I'm not gonna be made to feel bad about saying what something is because you just need to be honest sometimes. This is not any sort of reaction. This isn't a skin condition. Is it I have seen skin conditions and I have seen reactions. Okay, this, what's this then? is literally just a build up of makeup and oils on the eyelids and in the lashes, as you can see, over like a four week period. We always emphasize cleaning your lashes daily to ensure that this build up does not happen. Because okay, this so it's is not only an illness, lead it's just to gross. so many bad things like reactions and infections. Wow. Goodness me, my lovelies. Okay, I mean, that does, it looks repulsive, doesn't it? If you asked me straight off the bat what's wrong here, I would say, oh, there's uh, maybe like contact dermatitis or something like that. I'm gonna say, if you're gonna get a treatment like this, there is always, 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 always upkeep and maintenance. Whatever the treatment is that you get, if you get lash extensions, if you get hair extensions, if you get microblading, if you get, I don't know, dermaplaning, anything like that, there is going to always be an aftercare procedure that you kind of have to pay attention to. I've never been a huge fan of like uh, perm semi-permanent eyelash extensions, shall we say, because as a makeup artist, it really limits what you can do. It really limits what you can put near the eye and it really limits the final effect that you can go for. I know they look great. You can wake up with your lashes. You know, they give you that real extra like joie de vivre, girls. But you have to avoid certain products going near the line. You can't really deep clean your lashes because you might disturb the glue. This also kind of looks a little bit like a build up of dead skin as well, as well as like oil and makeup. It kind of looks a bit like a dead skin thing. So Let's get gross, shall we, my lovelies? If you've ever had a stretched ear, and let's just say, I don't know, you forgot to wash it for a few days, you can get like a buildup of like dead skin cells just on it. It's just your body going, time to clean this bit of skin, girls. And you have to keep them fresh and clean. I think the ultimate way to clean something like this would be to get a precise cleansing applicator. Something like one of those cotton buds that are a bit pointed, something like that. Gently brush over the lash line, being careful not to disturb the glue underneath. That will help you keep your eyelids really nice and healthy and high Hygienic. I know it's a bit naughty to say. I know it, I know it, I know it. Sometimes it isn't skin conditions. Sometimes it isn't people having bad luck with product reactions. Sometimes it just is people not being hygienic enough. All right, what an absolute terrible day to have eyes. All right, here we go. What's this? Mindset Ventures. Oh, uh, hear this now. Okay, right. Oh, this is from that podcast where everyone's just terrible, isn't it? Okay, should we listen? Are you ready to get angry with me here in the studio today, shall we? Okay, you ready? Right, Mindset Ventures. Tell us what ventures into the mindset we should have. I don't like makeup. Right. I'm against makeup. Right, okay. I don't think it's good for women. Uh, right. I don't think they really need to be using it, Okay. Honestly. I think it takes yes. away. <laughs> That's awesome. Makeup is, it's capitalizing on women's insecurities when it's something that they can easily fix. I think it takes away from a, woman, a woman's natural beauty and all- But you straighten your hair, madam. That's makeup. Bad for you. Like, you think about how skin absorbs things. When you read the ingredients on a foundation bottle, what is in it? You can't even pronounce it. It's yeah. Yeah, but, okay. Oh, crap. do you know, I hate this pseudoscience, this pseudo-intellectual conversations where they invite- Not everyone should have a podcast. Not everyone should. If you're going to talk about what ingredients, yes, we can have a serious conversation about, like, harm to aquatic life from Cyclopin to Siloxane, which was recently changed in the EMA in Europe. What we're not going to do is say, you shouldn't buy it because you can't pronounce it, girls, because what is H2O? 
if you saw the chemical equation and the chemical IUPAC name for water, would you be able to pronounce that in one go if you've never had to before? I can't pronounce words in Korean. Doesn't mean Korea does not exist or it's innately dangerous for me. That you're putting on your face. Right. And that is in turn making your skin worse. So you have to keep buying well, more foundation. To no. Cover up what it's creating. I won't agree with that. No. Okay. So what we're, not, what we're not gonna do and is that... have experts telling us things, then ignore experts. Right. Let's look at this lady, shall we? Now, I'm not usually one to come for something, but she she is wearing a camisole, a spaghetti strap camisole. If she's worried about what her skin's going to absorb, shall we say, we better hope that that top is not made of polyester because microplastics are actually clogging up people's arteries right now and causing myocarditis, which was in fact a bit of a dog whistle for the vaccine, go don't take the anti-vax, go, oh, the heart attacks are on the rise. A good little scientist always cites her sources. So, low dose of polystyrene microplastics induce cardiotoxicity in mice and human-originated cardiac organoids. The abstract of this article reads, microplastic particles, MPs, are prevalent in both industrial production and the natural environment, posing a significant concern for human health. Daily diet, air inhalation, and skin contact are major routines of microplastic intake in humans. The main injury target systems of microplastics include the digestive system, respiratory system, and cardiovascular system. However, the study on microplastics' adverse effects on the heart is less than other target organs. Previous in vivo studies have demonstrated that microplastics can induce heart injuries, including abnormal heart rate, apoptosis of cardiomyocytes, mitochondrial membrane potential change, and fibrin overexpression. It's not good, girls. Plastic will be the end of us. Plastic is our lead. In fact, it's even worse than our lead. It's everywhere. Have you all had fun? No! Because the science is finally settled that we are in fact finding microplastics in hearts. She talks here about like insecurities for women. Like, okay, there is a conversation to be had about enhancing beauty or maybe we shouldn't be giving these companies as much of our time and money as we do. I think there is a conversation to be had around what media affects us. Here on the Chanel, I've covered many, many shows from back in the day that have negatively impacted my generation in terms of how we view our bodies and what we consider glamour and what we consider like acceptable for social etiquette, those sorts of things. Absolutely, there is conversations for that. But to flat out say, I don't like makeup, it's bad for women, while sitting there with an ombre in your hair, straightened hair, which isn't, it doesn't look like it's that texture. Your hair looks like it's been artificially straightened to be that way. Makeup just isn't a foundation. Makeup is making up the appearance, i.e. giving an illusion of something that isn't there. It's giving pick me energy. It's giving, I'm the only real woman here because I don't believe in all that. Okay, okay. <laughs> Round of applause, she doesn't do all that. Now what? Okay. A man there was like, yes, yes, I love it, girl, yes. Okay. I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna put on 78 pounds worth of makeup. Bye. Honestly, I cannot wait to die. Right, what's this girl is right, Leah Louvain. Oh, that's a cute name, I like that, Louvain. Louvage. I am gonna do my makeup bad oh. and get my boyfriend's reaction. Oh, she talks reaction. with her nails. I don't I do know if people tell well. me, I genuinely I don't. don't. I truly, truly don't. Like, he's the kind of boyfriend, like, I can have food in my- I missed that, I was too busy admiring the beauty. Okay, what was the, what did she say? I am gonna do my makeup bad oh. and get my boyfriend's reaction. Oh. I don't know if People tell me I genuinely don't. I truly, truly don't. Like he's the kind of boyfriend Mine I can would. have food Mine in my teeth. Like... He will not tell me. Sure? Betrayal. <laughs> yeah. I've already got Betrayal. a bit of makeup on, so I need to layer it up, make it look really, really bad. Okay. And I don't think it's going to be. Is it going to be good bad so or is it going to be bad bad? I am going to put my cream bronzer over I've my entire face, this. and I'm running out. Got that so one. This is making me really sad because it feels like such a waste. But I need to be. Oh, goodness. The okay, right. We're going. Okay, total okay. Warm We're going very so um, scouse brow, should we say? I look like an absolute impalimpa. Like the way it's actually orange. Okay, I'm going to use a really bright concealer. Oh. <sighs> oh, it's I giving need me 20 16. I think this Make looks nice. <laughs> Loads of blusher. Is she just going to look like she's going to Okay, then stage? I'm going to do a really bad winged liner. Oh, do it bad. Go on, yeah. Oh, look at that! Oh, that's I terrible! Don't know what you fucking say. Make it, make it, it, well, it didn't. It's slayed perhaps in the 1700s. Slain? She's dead! Gorgeous. Great, love oh, that, my yes. My brows terrible as so. well. Nice and thick grandpa brows. Okay. Oops. Oh, oh there you go, okay, perfect. I need a yeah. really bad lip, so I'm gonna use brow pencil and concealer. 
this is starting to resemble me after a night out in like okay this is a close-up i feel like it's believable but it's really really bad so go to part two of his reaction oh we're not doing part two we're not doing all that girls i've got no time oh. for a part two leah louvain leah in the bin the bins ella Pabell, the bins see the one thing that i really dislike about tiktok when you do like a part two is that they're never labeled like okay where is the part two on your on your channel or whatever it is what's it called page where is it it's not labeled nobody says anything it's like go for part two where silly silly sausage silly right next up we have the aesthetic dentist if you don't know dentists can also do aesthetic treatments yes come on the uh, dr ashley demore demore demoage teach us the secrets oh i've just seen injecting filler on myself I uh, wouldn't recommend. I mean, at least she's a doctor. I think the thing is, it depends what the filler is, doesn't it? I guess we're going to see. But, like, you can't get the angle on yourself. And how do you, like, if you've ever had to do a treatment to yourself, I mean, even waxing. Let's let's take it all the way back to something really consumer happy, like waxing. You get the itch, don't you? Of, like, okay, it's on. Then you're like, no, 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 don't do it. No, stop, stop, no. Ah, ah, ah. And then it's like, you're all adrenaline. You're all sweaty. You're sitting there going, <gasps> I've done part of my elbow and I've got the rest of my whole body to do. Like, it's just a lot, isn't it? So I can't imagine also sitting there and being like, right, there's a needle in the eyeball, girls. Inject cheek filler with me. Oh, cheek filler, girls. Oh, God. Twice, and it really fucking hurts when you're injecting yourself. I'm using yes. Restylane Define and I love this stuff. Restylane. Oh, I've got Revelax Deep, girls. I just recently have my cheek. Taking out. all of my makeup off. Yuck. I'm only gonna do one syringe. I'm gonna split the syringe and do 0.5 on each side. I was gonna side. say, is that half a really mil? excited yeah. for this day. Right. Actually, I am. Right. No topical, nothing. No topical. Okay. In a while. Mm. I inject oh my goodness, me, girl. Down. Makes it a lot more of a Like, how can you get the angle of like, like that's quite a. Feel that crunchiness. <sighs> Here's the side that I just did. It's definitely a little bit more lifted. You can tell it's the side's low. a little bit more She's still flat. Quite low. But you can see the little lift in that's the cheek. Quite, yeah, that's like here, like just at the top of the nostril, like here. That would be really low on me. If you want higher cheekbones, get them filled in up here. <laughs> I will say, if you've never had cheek filler or never had jaw filler, I'm sure there's probably some other places that this happens as well. You have to have cheek fillers or these kinds of fillers, cheek and jaw, placed along the bone. So the needle needs to touch the bone. That's quite a visceral reaction, isn't it? But when it touches the bone, you do feel it. It's not like a pain as such, but it is like a something is touching a bone in my face. Like some, it does kind of send a shiver right up the labia. <laughs> labia. And then you will hear like a little crunch as it moves along and the filler is placed along there and you've got really strong muscles there and it's all very like... But then, of course, the needle comes out and you're left looking gorgeous. But that is a reason why you have to go to ultra professional people, girls. Not just like fillersforyou.com. Buy a bucket of piss, sweetie, and then inject it yourself because that is a recipe for disaster. And unfortunately, there are Facebook groups out there. There are subreddits out there. There are probably even TikToks out there of just little old Kathy girls who thought, I'd want some cheek filler, not paying 200 pounds for someone else to do. I get myself 50 pounds. Fast delivery. You are the worst. No, do not mess with your face. Right, what's this? Always tired, 97. 97? Oh no. That's an adult person. Right, Abby always tired, relatable, relatable. Pov, your eyeshadow stains. Pov? I think people use the phrase pov and are unsure because am I the pov or are you the pov? Pov means point of view. Is this a point of view that my eyeshadow would stain? Then I would be looking out at things and wouldn't see the staining. Pov, you're showing your friend staining? I don't know, right, let's watch, right, it's too scientific. All right, oh. Copyright card. Oh, I, yes, staining eyeshadow. <gasps> oh dear. And oh, she's got on her eyes. Oh no. Is that the same? If it's not the same, it might be the same. Oh, we're not doing the revolution things, are we? Oh dear. Oh, what an interesting light setup. Oh, uh, I think this is going to be copyright music, girl. Oh dear, right, I'm gonna mute that because copyright. Right, yes, oh no. 
Oh dear. Well, I am gonna say, yes, unfortunately, a lot of red shadows, a lot of pink eyeshadows are made with dyes rather than pigments. There is a slight difference between them. I've spoken about them earlier in the series. I'll recap it here for you today, my lovelies. For some reason, red pigments are really difficult to make. So pigments generally have to be milled from something. There has to be something out there organically occurring that is safe to be put on the body that can be be ground down, finely processed into a pigment. A lot of the pigments we see in cosmetics are iron oxides. Unfortunately, an entire branch of pigments, which is reds, cannot be made vegan friendly because they have to be dyes. They're usually made from plant extracts and unfortunately that means they're dyes. There is a very famous red pigment, which is really pretty, it's gorgeous, however it is not vegan, it is carmine, or carmine, however you want to say it. It is an extract from crushed up beetles, and it is a very pure red tone. It's not vegan friendly, so if you want to make vegan friendly eyeshadow formulations, you need to veer into dyes. And in the USA, I don't think you can actually say that an eyeshadow is an eyeshadow if it contains any of these dyes. I think it has to be considered like a pressed pigment, and then they're not licensed to be used around the eyes. There's also some interesting rules changing that you can't even have like a pressed pigment in an eyeshadow palette because it leads the consumer to believe that these are safe to use on the eyes. Even if on the back you say, please do not use the red shade on the eyes. And you can read more about this new FDA regulation on the FDA website. Because people aren't reading all that. People aren't reading all that, they're not doing all that, they're not doing it. The bottom line is, my lovelies, if you want to use something gorgeous and red on the eye, and you're going for a vegan plant-based formula, there is a risk of staining. Some companies create less staining than others. I'm not quite, I'm not quite sure how that is done, but I'm sure somewhere in the manufacturing process, perhaps the pigment is coated in something that prevents staining. I am unsure. The best way to get something out like this, though, is to use an oil-based cleanser, like the heaviest oil base cleanser you can get. Even something like a cold cream would do really good at getting the majority of this off, but sometimes you're just gonna have to wait out the stain. How vile! What a horrible sentence that was. Oh, what's this one by Mia34 Nunu? Pov, you fell asleep with Broughton on for 1.5 hours. I didn't. That's not what a pov means. I fell asleep with right. my eyebrow tinned oh. on. Oh no. Hours of brow time. <laughs> it's meant to be like five, ten minutes at best. Oh no. Oh no. Is she Australian? Oh, R and R. No. Be for real. R and R. Come on. Oh, shut the fuck up. Shut the front door, girlie. Well, she can cosplay oh, a Liverpudlian young no woman way. from the early noughties. <laughs> oh dear. Cancelled. Oh, yep, scrub a dub dub. No. Oh, no. No, unfortunately, no. If it's permanent. Oh dear, oh dear. So if you're using a permanent dye, I mean, obviously make sure you don't fall asleep. Like keep yourself alive, keep yourself active. If you're really tired, it's the worst time in history to decide, you know what, it's time to dye my hair or my eyebrows. Don't do it. However, there is a theory within the hairdressing world that permanent tint can lift stains. I'm not entirely sure if that's right on face value. I think the active ingredient of lifting, like a, a peroxide-based permanent dye that's perhaps a clear rather than like another jet black, may have properties that will lighten an artificial pigment upon the skin. Yes, will it defeat all staining? Unsure. Any hairdressers here in the comments, please let us know. I'm fascinated to know whether that is real or not. Another alternative would be to use something like a skin safe pigment bleach. Like, is it Jolie, Jolene, Jolie? Jolene, Jolene bleach your brows with me. What is this sissy music? That was awful, never do that again. That might be an option to do, but do not rub the skin until it's raw and then put bleach over the top. It's a recipe for disaster, girlies. Otherwise, make it a feature. Carve them out with concealer, make it a feature. Oh, oh, what's this white bleach? Okay, girlies, what's this? Color clique. Look at this. Yes! Oh my god! Bitch. Isn't it great? Highly unlikely, yes. but I know, yes. it's my dream. Bitch! Do you know that, oh my god, happy birthday to my mummy! No. I, I, as an avid hair bleach fan, as you can probably tell, she is a woman in STEM. <laughs> 
I love a white hair bleach. However, the majority of people on the planet are never going to be able to get hair that white just with a bleach. In fact, probably never even that white anyway. The closest you can get to it is like an ice cream, white vanilla fantasy toner like a pale platinum. So if you don't know what hair bleach actually does, it penetrates the hair fiber by opening the cuticle. Is it the cuticle? Yes, it's the cuticle, not the follicle. The follicle's at the bottom. It opens the cuticle, penetrates in, and lightens the natural pigment in the hair, which is why they always say like, you can't bleach out bad hair dye. You can just make it like blorange. When hair goes so, so, so light, you're not adding a white pigment in. You're making all the pigments within that hair strand translucent, which is then why you need a toner in order to fill in the space that you've now like removed in the hair cuticle. It's a lot. I love looking at stuff like this because I I'm just like, oh, imagine. But also I'm very glad because hair that's usually that white is not usually that healthy. It's dead. Dead girls, a dead body. Oh, what do we have here? Rachel Madison Carlisle girls. Oh, she's got a triple barrel name. Okay, right. Patiently waiting for, oh, Jemima Starship, Michaela Monet, Alex Earl, all the amazing creators, lovers that try my liquid blush and face oil makeup technique. Okay. This might be a color correction style makeup, although I'm gonna say rather extreme color correction. One, two, three. Oh no, that baby don't have the gout because she's got the gout and we don't know why. Do love a bit of Outcast. Okay, right, we're doing a lot of concealer. <gasps> no, see, I just, oh, Juno Birch, but pink. Um, um, okay, right, let's, okay, the brush is far too large. Trust the process. What's the process? She's going to take that off, isn't she? Because she's literally hot pink. Unless she uses a full coverage powder foundation over this. She's just going to be pink. Right. Mm, suspicious ladies on the game. No. Have we seen a colour change? Oh, no. She's still vaguely pink. I'm not sure how well this is going to translate, you know. Oh, is that a colour change? Is that a pigment change? No, she's still pink. She's still pink. Still very pink. Personally, I don't understand. I don't I just personally know. Day one of graduation. Graduation is only one day. Okay, let's, let's, let's. Don't bother. I've made my thoughts perfectly clear on this, haven't I? Should we go to the comments and have a look? What is the purpose of this method by Medium Psychic? I want to be this Delulu. Who's that wonderful girl? Could she be any Delulu? I will sort of agree because, I'm, I mean, go for what you like, go for what you like. However, you are just going to look bright pink in natural daylight. I would have loved to have seen this outside in the daylight. Now, if this was a color correction tutorial, I would also probably say maybe don't use that much pigment if you're trying to achieve just like a soft pink glow from within. I don't know though. The jury's out. Not for me. Would never do it on a client. What do you think? Let me know what you think. Okay, right. So this is Jordan Lynn, who, if you don't know, Jordan is a trans icon on TikTok. And I actually love her content because she shows very realistically what it's like to be a trans woman, especially when you are in the process of transition. Okay, let's watch. Right, okay, oh, we've got copyright music. Okay, so she is shaving her face. That is actually horrendous as a trans person to do, but there we go. Right, I do, I will always say she does far too much. Like, this is doing the most, absolute most, absolute most, but clearly for views, because look at that. Like, that was, that's not the same makeup, Jordan, not the same. Duck dives are the best feeling. Not sure about that. Vanilla ice cream is also pretty good. I do want to say this makeup, obviously not the same as this makeup. Look at this. I mean, obviously filtered for the gods. You've got skin tint on, you've got air, you've got blurring feel, gorgeous, lovely. It's not the same. It is not the same. But what I do love about Jordan's content is she does not shy away from sometimes how for lack of a better word, harsh, you can look in early transition. So she doesn't hide the fact that she has facial hair. She doesn't hide the fact that she's recently had a hair transplant. She doesn't hide these facts. And I love that because for a long time as a trans person on the internet, I was like, if I see a single speck of texture in my lower face area because I have to go through extra steps to get smooth skin, I'm going to unalive myself. Luckily, 
my dysphoria, she's nowhere near as bad as that anymore, which is nice. Like I don't shy away from skin texture anymore. We call that growth in the industry. But yes, props to you, Jordan, my lovelies, for, for fibbing on the internet for lots of views. How many views does this have? I can't, how do you, how do you see views on TikTok? How do you see? Can't see it, but also I will say, do not look at the comments of Jordan's content if you are just empathetic to the human experience because they are always filled with the worst takes on humanity. But nevertheless, I've had enough, my lovelies. Well, I've got some thoughts about what we've seen today, my loves. We've seen a variety, a plethora of interesting hacks, fails, tips, tricks, and hygiene fails. I'm gonna reiterate again, my lovelies, make sure you're doing a double cleanse on your skin to get rid of everything, all of the makeup on your skin. Wear as much makeup as you want. Wear whatever colors you want. Just make sure you spend that extra amount of time getting it off the skin and then do a nice little skincare routine to keep your skin happy and lovely. And always remember your SPF. And with that, my lovelies, it's time for the Patreon. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here. Yes, you can. If you've seen any abject horrors over on TikTok, make sure you tag me in them or send them to me. And you never know, they might appear in the next video, my lovelies. Today's Instagram shout out goes to Tanya Green. Thank you so much for following me over on Instagram. You're stunning woman on the go. And if you want to be in with a chance of being featured in my next video's Instagram shout out, make sure you follow me on Instagram. It is xxluxaria. I have a QR code on the screen somewhere here. And over there, I post my travel and fashion content. Yes. And once again, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Petrones, Orcos Samoji, Ariadia X, Becky Johnson, Beebles32, Cameron Pittman, Shell Herman, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Emily Worsham, Eric Castillo, Finch Dunham, Jen Martin, Caitlin Wright, Larissa Says Relax, Leanne Jones, Lenore, Les Banana, Mariah Sherman, Miss Kiss, Novembricks, Paola Rivera, Rye Loves Rory, Stefutex, Steve, Taylor Martin, and Vicky Walsh. Thank you guys for keeping the Chanel thriving and aliving. And you know what, my loves? I think I'm gonna leave it on the note of if you want to wear makeup, don't listen to what these people say on podcasts. Life is one of the longest things you are ever going to singularly experience here on this planet. In fact, it is the longest experience you will ever have to make decisions that benefit yourself and surround yourself with love and not those people that are desperate for people that hate them to accept them. Not worth the energy. And with that, my loves, I'll see you in the next one. <gasps> yeah. Maybe